Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. All right, guys, maybe when I am brave enough to open a P.O. box, I will have someone, if they would not mind, kindly sending me a can of, of Sir Stroming, and I can try it on camera. That'd be nice. But um, I have, you know, trying to learn a bit more, and I know a bit. Like, you open it underwater. Let's do it. Hi, Swedes. For anyone watching, did I say my name's Connor? Original link to the video, top description, below that, link to the Discord. Just click on it, send you right over there. Would love to have you. Already a few Swedes over there. Okay, let's go. Hold on. There we go. Let's do it. So, uh, I have seen on YouTube that there are several videos of people... Uh, eating so-called surströmming, uh, which Sustrum. in English becomes uh, fermented Baltic herring. And uh, on these, on two of these videos, I've seen people who are not used to eating surströmming. They don't know how to do it. Uh, so they have their first experience and uh, they try it and they tell everybody how awful it, it is. And uh, they do eat it, but and they say it smells awful tastes awful and they emphasize everything by actually vomiting afterwards right everyone wants more views you want to and there i think there there's this this effect i don't know what social effect, where something that has a reputation of something makes you kind of want to overreact to it i'm not trying to say it probably isn't difficult to um bear the smell and taste if you're not used to it um which i won't be when i try it but uh yeah I, I think people tend to exaggerate it's more of a show for people watching but uh, yeah you open it underwater and put it on bread now the problem is they just don't know how to eat it i'm gonna show you some tricks here which is when you try this out yourself if you follow these tricks you're gonna see it's not so bad so first of all what you need is a can of sous drumming. Now, outside Sweden, these would be a bit difficult to find, so or almost impossible. But in Sweden, you can buy them, and uh, in the season, I should say, you can buy them, which is August, September. Uh, they're quite easy to come around. Now, what you do is when you open the can, you have to open the can away from the table, if you sit uh, because it's going to smell. Now, I am now about five meters away from the table. You can even have it ten meters away from the table. Uh, okay, guys, but if you do open it, like if you're standing, like, but like in the woods right there, like behind this this cabin right here, like, would you be able to smell it if he if he opened it right here, like in the air? I I I I, I won't. I, I no pausing. So uh, <clears throat> now. And the way to open it is you put it in a bucket of water. So I have a bucket of water and I put it under the water. The can is slightly pressurized and uh, when it appears, uh, the can, uh, there's going to come a bit of juice. There's going to come some juice out of it. And this uh, juice is foul smelling. If you get it so, on clothes, like, is it like you skunk? You just... Uh, None of the juice will actually hit you, and it, the water will also contain the smell. You're pretty so much going to have to throw out your shirt, Here's it, the can right? carefully, and it is now, okay, yeah, there's some juice coming out, and now I open it. If you're not used to eating surf drumming, you, at, when you open the can, well, you might not want to inhale, uh, or, well, at least not inhale through your nose. Um, because the smell is unpleasant. You can get used to it. So, if you have eaten surf drumming a couple of times, the smell is not that bad. But uh, if, you're <coughs> if you're not used to it, uh, uh, you're not going to. So I have eaten Sue's drumming several times, 
and it's not so bad. I'm used to it. <coughs> now, I've opened the can and now I pry the lid open. And here we go. We have here. So, so sometimes I see in videos where they open it, it's just like mush with like some bones. Sometimes it's actual like little fillets. They look very delicate. So I. Some Baltic herring has been fermented. Now, what I do, I take one of the one fish out of the can and I put it on a plate like this. Now, the smell from the can is foul. The smell from the fish is not so bad. So you can actually take the fish to the bread. your table. Now, when you buy sous drumming, you can either have fillets uh, in the can or you can have the whole fish like I'm having here. So if you have the whole fish, Bones you and first all. of all have to open the fish like this. You have to open it at the stomach side because you need to get the entrails out. So can you eat might... it just like straight up? Just like take that fish and just eat it. And would you, like would you be fine? Like not sick? Look a little bit disgusting, but it's not so bad. So you open it. I don't mean like I mean like if you actually get it in your stomach. I don't mean are you gonna be sick like puke from the grossness. I mean like is it actually gonna like if you eat it just straight up the fish. You you know what I mean? And you just take the entrails out. Put them on the side of the plate like this. For later. And what's that white stuff? Bit. It's not so bad. <clears throat> now, next, I I try to. It's a little bit slippery, but I now open the fish all the way like this because you need to get the entrails out, but you also need to get the backbone out. So here comes the tricky part: getting the backbone out. And uh, basically, you open it like this. And then you try somehow to pry the meat off the backbone. And uh, I'd imagine I the bones are it, super, yeah, super delicate. In the middle. And, well, the meat goes one way, the backbone goes the other way. Like this. So I now have... Uh, I have now... Deboned fillet. A fillet here, fillet on this side. So you can either uh, keep uh, the skin, or just or try to remove the skin as well. I I, I don't mind eating the skin. Now <clears throat> here we go. I have a fillet here, and uh, next I'm going to try to get the backbone out of the other fillet. That's a lot of um, you know work. It's. Uh, Almost seems like he should he should use like scissors. A little bit to get used to. I'm working with this. Oh yeah. Oops. Well, I'm sort of getting the skin, only getting the skin off, and the meat. Okay, it doesn't look at <clears throat> very tasty, but I can assure you, it's not so bad. Okay, I'll help a little bit with my fingers here. Ah, why? So get out of the potatoes. I the skin off. Here we go. I got most of the meat off. I'm gonna peel off. And here we go. Here we go. There's the, there's the rest of the meat. Yeah. The backbone is away. And I got most of the, most of the meat off. I now have two fillets here. Uh, next so i get like there are some organs and the backbone there but what is the white stuff is that like what was inside of the guts or something what you have to do what you do is <clears throat> you don't eat the fish as it is so you uh, you now need to prepare a little sandwich like this or a roll <clears throat> so you need potatoes fresh potatoes um <clears throat> In Sweden, we usually use... I always see potatoes like this in Sweden. And it seems like the potatoes that, like, 
you would use, like I, w I would use for like, they, they seem boiled, but they seem like they were like, they were de-skinned. Obviously they, they were, um, they were peeled from the skin, obviously boiled. And then just like you cut off a chunk and, and use it as you wish. And I, I, I don't see that. Like, it, it, like these potatoes, when you chop them up, you would use it in like a potato salad with like mayonnaise and onions and, and whatnot. Or uh, sometimes you go with like Italian dressing sometimes. Uh, but anyways, um, but I always see it like in Sweden, like I, not much mashed potatoes or baked potatoes or um, um, home fry, no. I'm forgetting it, but I, I, I always see it in this form, and I, I, it's something I've just noticed. A special kind of potatoes, but as, as long, but basically any potato will do. So you don't have to follow the traditional potato. So you take potato and the base. you make a little pile like this on this bread. Now, this is kind of very thin bread. Um, <clears throat> So, and it's a special kind of bread you can usually just find. I don't know if you can find it elsewhere outside Sweden. Uh, but It looks like a uh, Greek cracker. Basically any white bread can, will do. Now, on this roll, you also put onions. Now, I prefer chives. We didn't have chives today, so I have another kind of mild onion. But I'm not a big onions, sour cream potatoes. fan, but... Now, I have here yogurt. Or, sorry. Oh. So, Maybe that will be good then. You need, you want to have something sour to go with this. So, I picked yogurt because that's what we have, what we had. But you can also take something else, <clears throat> so which is a, a dairy product which is sour. Anyone, any kind of dairy pro, sour dairy, dairy product. Could you use like a sour, like a sharp cheese, or maybe cheese and fish would go together very well. So maybe not. Is my volume testing? Eh. Testing, 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 testing. Okay. We'll do. Now, uh, these can be a little bit difficult to actually bite off. So I, I put them in, uh, I, I cut them into pieces already. I put the pieces inside this roll. Now you can. You can peel off the bones, you can remove the small bones if you want to. Yeah, how difficult is it to bite so through? Small, you can actually... Because you don't want to let... I'm interrupting him a lot. You don't want to, like, bite it and then just, like, have a... Like, take a somewhat small bite, but, like, catch some fish and pull, like, the whole piece of fish out. And remove that... the small bones if you want to, or you can keep them. Because they are so small, you can actually eat these bones. And you just put the fish like this, and... You now have a roll ready to eat. You roll it up and then you eat it. Now, <clears throat> um, you might wonder. It's like a burrito. What it actually tastes like. So, Fish. Um, it has a bit of a sour, no, I should say a burnt taste to it. If I was trying, I would just load potatoes and onions on it. Um, it's not... I gotta shut my mouth. I, I have ADD. I, ah, I'm interrupting him. Uh, it has a bit of a sour... No, I should say a burnt taste to it. Um, Acidic. It's not... I wouldn't call it a delicacy. I, I do enjoy eating it, but it's, it's not going to be the uh, culinary experience of your lifetime it won't be it's but more of like a traditional a different experience i would compare it a little bit like a, a bit uh, like uh the aussies the australians they have the vegemite oh and the scottish they have their haggis now i might offend occasional scotsmen and some aussies now by saying they're okay to eat but they, they are not fantastic neither haggis nor vegemite is fantastic and honestly the fermented baltic herring isn't fantastic either but it is a different kind of ex 
experience and if you have the chance do try it just make sure you do it the wrong way the right way not the wrong way and uh, you can when you have the roll you just bite it like this burrito it. good bite thank you very much hope this will help someone from a terrible experience so bye I love the uh, the exit, so casual. Uh, he seemed like a nice guy, and very good. All right. When I do, if I do, when I do, get a PO. Boxer, I'll, uh, I'll ask for that. All right, see you guys. Love you all. Hope you're doing well. If not, chin up. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. Emotions are fickle, my friend. And I know it's getting pretty dark in Sweden. It is. Well, it's kind of cloudy and raining, so it's not a great piece of data or to judge it on this, but it's still dark out. I'd say it gets, or it's still somewhat light. I'd say it gets dark around 6.30 p.m., something like that, but I'm sure it's sooner for you Swedes getting into that 24-hour winter. Anyway, I'm babbling. See you guys next time. Bye.